Um, Simone and Andrew from Tribal Choice, thank you very much for being part of Accelerate Content Marketing and Brand Publishing. Um, first of all, could you perhaps tell us, you know, what, what exactly you do um, and who you do it for? Mm -hmm. So do you want some background information on this as well? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Do you want to talk about Tribal Choice and what we're doing at the moment? Yeah, I mean, Tribal Choice, basically, we see ourselves as an online marketing business, um, helping people, or helping businesses, uh, structure their online presence in a way that it's a sustainable um, presence and that it can drive leads to their businesses. Um, very much about setting up their base building blocks, making sure that they meet Google's requirements, um, their audience, attracting the right audience, the targeted audience, mm -hmm. and, and growing and developing that because set and forget mentality online just doesn't work. And it's about Our choice, basically, I'm one of the founders there. Um, Andrew and I have been working together for something like 12 or 13 years now. And Andrew's background in online. Yeah, so I'm originally from the UK. I spent the first 10 years of my career um, working in academia for Oxford University Press. I'm um, specialising in electronic products. In the 2000, um, Read Elsevier, which is a large global publishing company, asked me to come to Australia to um, put their businesses um, online, um, which I did quite successfully, um, where I met Simone about uh, 10, 10 years ago, um, and we put um, all their content online, um, moving it from the print pattern, and I have to start again. Moving it from the print paradigm to the internet. Mm -hmm. Um, and last year we decided to start our own company, Travel Choice. Okay, so obviously both of you have been involved with um, SEO and, and content and search for a long time. Um, we hear a lot now that, you know, is search still as important. Can you talk a little about that? You know, do you think it's still as important as it was? I, I think search is always going to be important. I mean, with more and more information being put out there in the internet, you've got to be able to find it. So the search engine technology is always going to be a driver on the internet. Mm -hmm. And it's going to grow. I mean, there's not that many businesses there that can't do without being online mm -hmm. these days. And even um, manufacturing businesses, BB, BBC, they need to be found. And in being found, how does, um, just very briefly, how, or sort of a basic explanation, how does the Google search engine obviously being the most important one I guess. Mm -hmm. How does that actually work with content? Um, there's two there's two components to the um, Google search engine. One is that uh, it's called a crawler and um, it's a bit um, some people say it's a spider that goes out and crawls over the internet. It doesn't actually crawl over the internet, it goes to a web server, it goes to the page on the web server and it downloads the information. It then takes that information back into the masses of servers that Google have and then it indexes that content. Um, it indexes that content so that when the user types in the search term into Google, it comes up with the best results that it can. Can you talk a little bit about um, on-page SEO and the content and off-page SEO? Okay. About those two, those two um, components? Uh, on-page content um, is a very important part of our SEO. Uh, it's also important in terms of making sure you are meeting your online audience's requirements. Lots of people make the mistake of just thinking about Google. You need mm -hmm. to do think about Google and you also need to think about who you're trying to target, particularly with content. Um, so on-page content, you really got to be focusing on things like aboutness. Be about one thing or a niche thing on each web page. Um, the relevance to your audience. Be as relevant as you possibly can Make sure your content is crawlable and accessible for search engines like Google. Um, and make sure that the content is unique. Um, we see lots of businesses that um, take information from, if, if they don't, if they're distributors or retailers of product, they'll take information, for example, from manufacturers and load it on their site. And what they don't realise is that information is already out there on the web. Mm -hmm. That Google's already indexed, crawled and indexed before. So you need to be writing new content, keeping that content fresh and evolving it and updating the site all the time. So if you were to do sort of, you know, the back end of SEO, sort of behind the scenes, but you didn't do on-page SEO, would you suffer greatly from that or? It's not going to help you. Um, Google, one of the things that Google does is they look on-page or in the front 
front end of your website as well as the back end. Um, old sort of black hat strategies were, you know, keyword stuff that, that the tagging in the code behind the site um, to sort of trick Google. Google actually looks for that now yeah. and they will downgrade you because of it. So we recommend against that. And again, as I said, it's focusing on what Google wants, but also your audience. Yeah. So don't just write. Perhaps we could talk a little about keywords and how they actually work and how they help with SEO, and if they're still as important as they were. Yeah, keywords are still very important. Um, it's, it's really about first thing you need to do before you even sit down to either rework your site or start to build a site is to find out what your audience is actually searching for. So many people make the mistake of sitting around, say, with their product team and saying, well, these are all the terms we think we should use. Google has very good tools and there are analytics tools to out there to assist you to do that. And then the data structure and how you set out your website and the web pages you develop and craft and the content that you craft should match those terms. Mm -hmm. On page, in the content, in the headers, um, in the URL structure is very important and also how you tag your images and your videos, for example. And making sure they're niche and all about one thing. So could we talk a little more about those actually on-page um, SEO elements, like title tags and things like that, um, and what, what's really best practice around those? Um, best practice is uh, H1 headers are very important. There has been emphasis in the past on meta tagging behind the scene, which is becoming less important now. So H1 header, which is the title heading on the page, uh, the URL structure, and then the use of those keywords throughout your content. Title tags, alt tags, alt text. Um, and making sure that you don't keyword stuff. There's no point doing that. One reason is Google knows you're doing it. The other reason is it will make the content not easily digestible by the person that's trying to read it. So you don't you, want to put your audience off. So when you say keyword stuff, that, that's just literally Again and again. Again and again. Yeah. Too much. I mean, the thing is that um, Google's whole mantra is to make sure that they're serving up the best search engine results. And if somebody lands on your site, let's say you start to rank well in Google, people start landing on your site, but if they then leave your site straight away or bounce back out of your site, Google's going to look at that and see that you're actually not answering the question, the search question, and that's not going to help you. So that's why, again, it's really important right for Google, but also right for your audience. So Google has a technology in place that where it can find the keywords in the paragraph, or how close they are to the beginning of the paragraph, how important it is to the paragraph, how important it is to the page. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keyword stuff in, and you know, there are lots of black hat ways of being able to go higher in Google, and that's only for a short term. So when you're looking at the keywords, you've got to think, you know, where's the most important place in the sentence, mm -hmm. or in the structure of the document, put those keywords um, and then they have very good algorithms and technology in order to be able to work out how relevant that keyword is to that page. Mm -hmm. And Andrew, what, can you tell us a little bit about what goes on behind, with SEO sort of behind that, that the sort of page that people see in, in the actual, is metadata, is that no longer important or? Um, it's all important, I mean, the, the, there are about, there are over, I think that Google have now published, there are over a hundred different things that they do things that they look at in order to be able to do a, a rank on that document, on that page. And so they take all the information back and then they put it into lots of indexes and then they churn it around and they do some of their magic on it to be able to work out what that page is about. But in its purest form, and the page should just be about one thing. And if it's all, cause, so the aboutness of that page is just one thing and you just concentrate on that <coughs> one topic or that one item and it will come to the top. It's also of different types of content, it's just not the written word. So, you know, content, YouTube video, for example, is extremely important. I think what people don't realise now is YouTube is a starting point for search now, not just Google. And, you know, Google owns YouTube, so they're supporting it. But there's a lot of business search, and not just consumer search as well, actually happening in YouTube. So, content can be images, the written word, it's also about how you lay out the page. And video is very, very important because it's easily digestible. Mm. But it's how do you tag that video. Um, make sure you tag it that's relevant on the page. If, your car, if it's about brake service, make sure the video is tagged as brake service, for mm. example, if you're in a 
So, so content is so content is king, but you know, but it has to be contextual content. So you can put all that content together, but you have to make it contextual. And then you have to be able to put that SEO smarts around it so that the search engines can index it. Can we talk, we sort of touched on YouTube obviously, can we talk a little about about the impact of social media and how that fits with, with search? I think it, I mean it's it's a tool I mean it achieves a number of things. Um, but because we're talking about content marketing here, I think it's a, a good means of getting unique information or unique content. So I talked about uniqueness before as being an important thing for search engines and for SEO. If you're getting your audience to contribute to the content on your site, um, then they're going to be writing things that are unique. Mm. Um, so it's going to give you good quality content, it'll give you inbound links. Um, but it also, from a marketing point of view, um, gives you community or a sense of community with your business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, following your business, being involved in it, customer services, endless benefits. Um, but from a content point of view, uniqueness is, is good. Um, can we just elaborate a little on inbound links that you just mentioned, exactly what, what they are, mm -hmm. what, what they mean for search? Um, it's basically Google's way of um, looking at your site um, maybe you want to talk about how the algorithm works initially. Well, um, no, inbound links, the, the way that Google's algorithm was originally developed was about um, based on scientific theory of um, like scientific papers. Mm -hmm. So a scientific audit, you know, uh, group would develop some research, send it out there for peer review. Google originally built its algorithm based on that peer review kind of model. Yeah. So if you have other businesses or other websites pointing to your website, then they see that as um, you know, authoritative. Authoritative. Authoritativeness. So it's like a, a yeah. vote sort of thing for you. Yeah, a vote. Like a peer review. A vote. Yeah. 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 Um, um, does does black black hat SEO does that still do people still practice that and does it work? Does it fall Google for a while or? Mm, not really. And it's not a good thing to do. I mean, it, 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 well, I mean it, it can fall Google for a short period of time because it depends on what the black hat is. Mm. I mean, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there trying to work out ways in which they can um, spruik the index or, or get the pages found. Um, and that quite, quite quickly spreads out. But Google, you know, they've got a massive developer that are looking at all of this type of stuff and they close it down. But it definitely works in the short term. Mm. Some people we don't we wouldn't recommend, but you can, you know, find ways in which you can boost your website artificially. But our view is that in the long term it will damage you and you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. so it's short it's term. not advisable. No. Um, maybe that maybe that is sort of answers the next question, but um, what's the biggest mistake that people make when they're trying to sort of get a good rank or they're trying to get a search engine's attention? I think they focus too much on just a search engine as opposed to their audience. Mm -hmm. Short term isn't sustainable. And it can damage you in Google's eyes as well. If they see that you're trying to do things that are black hat, it can be a mark against you. And it can take a long time to kind of overcome that. So in effect, you're probably damaging your online presence. So the long short term gain. The sort of long term view would be um, that you have to work at this all the time. Yes. And that you have to keep doing content rather than just, you know, going like that's yeah. I mean, businesses are uh, living, breathing entities, and your website should reflect that. Evolve it, change it, add to it, mm -hmm. grow it. Set and forget won't help you anymore. What's the one tip or piece of advice that you'd give to perhaps a marketer who, you know, has a company website is trying to sort of, you know, get some traction with it? What, what's the one tip you would give them about SEO? Have a look to see what works. So type in the search term into Google and see what pages come up and then have a look and say why do those pages come up? Mm, competitive sites as well. Really understanding what people are searching for in the market. Mm. That's where you should start. Know what, pe what terms are people searching for and then it's about crafting your or reviewing your website to see are you meeting those terms mm. so that can, Google can actually match your website with those searches. So the so the that, that um, scenario then is that 
if you're working in the business and you've got a product, you know about your product, you know the ins and outs of your product, the specification, the types of audience that are going to use that product. But do you really understand what the user is typing into Google to get to your product? Because they don't understand the tech specs of your product or what you call it internally. Um, so it's what, what does the user type into Google in order to be able to get to your products? And the best way to do that is to look yourself and see when you type something in and then have a look to see who comes up well. Mm. So again, it comes back to knowing your audience as being a really important yeah. factor. And yeah. know your online audience. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know what they're searching for. And I, I find it really surprising, but so many people that we talk to, it's, n it's not factored in in their existing sites. They've designed a site to look good, um, to present well, and even if they have the content management systems, etc., they've forgotten that one most important component, which is where you should start. Mm -hmm. And that will help you grow. And then you can build web pages around those search terms. And as those search terms evolve and change as through time, you can keep adding those pages mm -hmm. to the site. Have you obviously done lots of sites and lots of SEO, etc., and some quite major projects? Have you got, you know, one example of where um, you could take us through where, you know, that process, you know, and the results it actually achieved for a client? Or yeah, can we probably talk a, about maybe not a big example, not a, not a sort of big corporate example, but a, a small to medium-sized business um, as an example is a distributor of a product in Australia and the manufacturers in another country. And they came to us and basically said, we really want to become the number one distributor in Australia. Mm -hmm. We haven't been around very long, but how can we dominate page one of Google? What can we do? Um, so in a relatively short period of time, we were able to dominate page one, knocking their competitors out, but building them a well-structured online approach that use different types of content media. Mm -hmm. So PR, YouTube videos, um, we built then a, a, a website that then had sort of smaller niche sites to support this mm -hmm. product. And they gained about 50% of the page one space within a three month period by mm -hmm. doing that. And it wasn't just Google AdWords either. Mm -hmm. so I'm talking about the organic results. Yeah. So it's possible, and it's not just through one website, it's through doing a, a number of different strategies. Yeah. And through that, they basically were able to negotiate um, a better price with their manufacturer to import and mm -hmm. sell the products. So yeah. that's sort of a real yeah. kind of life example. So finally, where do you see the future of search? And what's the big developments that are going to happen in the next I don't know, five, five or so years? Oh, I think all that has to be around mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mobile devices are going to take over <coughs> desktops and laptops sometime soon. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the statistics are, but um, you just have to look out in the street with everybody holding their mm -hmm. mobile phone, pressing them, pointing them, shoving them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where a lot of the um, energies are going to go with search engine companies developing their applications around the, um, about, around the mobile. But it's even, accessible information. Yeah. But, but even then, content will be. Mm. I don't think there's any avoiding content. <laughs> it's all about content. It is. Okay, well thank you so much, Simone and Andrew, for your time. Thanks.